actually the, the regulatory manager for di our dicamba products, including Ingenia. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I have a background. I'm a, a PhD weed scientist, 30 years in the industry. Uh, started out in research and product development, and then spent the last 15 years or so in regulatory. So have a pretty wide perspective on a lot of different angles, but not necessarily an expert in any one. So in uh, supporting capacity, I have two other individuals from BASF. I have Ryan Bain, who is our innovation specialist here from Jonesboro, Arkansas. So he's very familiar with what you've experienced since last year. And then also Steve Bowe, and he manages our biology herbicide group out of RTP. So I'm out of Raleigh, North Carolina, as well as Steve, and then Ryan's local, okay? So I think in general terms, what we'd like to do, um, I think it, this is a good setup, the way this is organized, just by chance. I think Monsanto did an excellent job of doing some heavy lifting and trying to explain some of the more technical aspects of what we look at and how we develop and research products for this new technology. Um, it makes my brain hurt, and I work on this every day. So I appreciate the questions you have. And I'm sure as we get into this, if there's still remaining questions or some confusion over details, um, you know, we can all work together to try and make sure you have a fuller understanding of that, okay? What I like to do is, is uh, a little bit lighter, just go through, talk a little bit about our experience. Uh, we've, we've worked with Dicamba for over 50 years. Uh, we're the primary registrant for Dicamba, and we've got experience with improvements in the technology over the years as we've worked our way up to use in dicamba tolerant crops. Uh, give you a perspective on what we've seen in the field and give you a little overview about you know, what we're seeing, what could be some possible explanations of what are seen, and, and just go through those as well. So I don't think I really need to remind anybody about the need for the technology. Obviously, with glyphosate resistant weeds and the prevalence, particularly in the Mid-South, uh, there are new tools that are needed. And obviously, dicamba is a tool that's very effective. I don't think anyone would actually doubt the effectiveness of dicamba for the control of those broadleaf weeds. Just a, a picture of a clean field with the, the amaranth response. So, you know, our experience has been when used in, as directed on the label, the product is highly effective for the control of these resistant weed species. And it adds a very good additional level of uh, mode of action particularly when combined with pre-emergence residual products, followed by an early post-emergence application. And I think that's probably the core value of the system is the earlier timing. And I think that's one thing that I think we probably need to all appreciate and try and preserve. That's where you're going to get the biggest bang for the buck, and it's clearly the strong point of the technology is are those earlier applications. Yes, there could be value in some of the later applications, but it may be that those are some that were, that were perhaps less likely to try and manage in some way. So early application, highly effective, and certainly valuable technology for the control of glyphosate-resistant weeds. A little bit of looking at what we've been seeing this year, and, and I know we've heard this all before, but I'd like to reiterate that there's really no plant species that we know of that's more sensitive to dicamba than soybeans, conventional soybeans. And it is, the, it is the canary in the coal mine for dicamba, if you will, okay? If, if dicamba is anywhere near the faintest whiff, they will show you a visual response, okay? And it doesn't take much. But they have a certain capacity to respond back and recover from that, particularly with early exposure. So it, it's no doubt that when someone goes out and finds the curled leaf, the cupped leaf, that it, it's an emotional issue for you, and I understand that, and the, the injury is there, but I think we have to understand that in many cases, it is just that canary in the coal mine giving you a indication that dicamba has been there. Not that necessarily the canary is gonna die. That it's really just a visual indication, and, and it's, an, it's an amazing tool, really, to think about studying pesticide movement. Not just dicamba, but any pesticide that's applied because a lot of this is attributable to physical drift, and you can apply that to anything that is sprayed. So if you think about using dicamba in soybeans as a tool to understand physical drift, it perhaps will give you a greater appreciation for anything and everything that you spray, knowing that the same thing is happening with a fungicide or an insecticide and other herbicides that are less visual in their response on non-targets. 
So I think it's, it's probably a good lesson for all of us to step back and appreciate that when we're out there making applications, we need to be careful no matter what we're applying. So I alluded to before, the BSF's got over 50 years of experience with Dicamba, and we went through a fairly lengthy process of developing the new technology in the form of Ingenia, a lower volatility formulation of Dicamba for use in DT crops. Uh, we evaluated that internally and then additionally took it to universities, and on top of that, the additional regulatory requirements that we've had to put forward to EPA to get the technology approved. I can tell you as the regulatory manager that in basic terms, Ingenia is just a new formulation of dicamba, but the amount of work that we had to do to support that through EPA's evaluation was closer to a new active ingredient. So this is a, it's, it's a unique um, herbicide registration for a new use, um, and it received a lot of additional regulatory scrutiny, uh, part of which were the field flux.